you are probably not aware of how to use this brand new feature in Angular Signals. I'm talking here about the model input feature recently released in Angular 17.2. This is not a direct replacement for ng model for doing bidirectional data binding. There's a lot more to it. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how this feature is meant to be used. Welcome back to the Angular University channel. I'm Vasco. I've been teaching Angular since 2016 to hundreds of thousands of Angular developers. The mission of the Angular University is to demystify Angular and teach advanced Angular concepts in a simple and understandable way, giving you the practical, real-world advice that you need for your projects. So if this is something that you are interested in, I invite you to subscribe here to the Angular University channel. Let's then get straight into the content. What is a model input in Angular Signals? When should you use it and why compared to a regular signal input? What is the difference between both? To explain the difference and show how model is meant to be used, I have created here a simple custom checkbox component. It's just a wrapper for a checkbox that takes in a couple of parameters, a label that is going to be outputted here. So this is a string and also a value. The value is going to be a Boolean and is going to specify if the checkbox should be checked or not. Here is how we use this component in a parent component. We pass in here a string value for the label and here notice that we are using bidirectional data binding as a syntax. This is the same syntax that you typically use with ng model. Notice that the value here is receiving a completed value and this completed value is being passed here to this model signal that we receive here, this model input. Now, what is the difference between these two inputs? The main difference is that label is a read-only signal input and value is actually a writable input signal. This means that we receive values here from our model, just like with an input, but we can also write values back to it. And this is especially interesting if here to the custom checkbox component, we are passing here as an input value, not an object, string, object, etc., not a primitive value, but instead we are passing here a signal. So if we jump here to the definition of completed, we are going to see that indeed this is in effect a signal. It's a signal of Boolean that gets initialized with the value false. Then this is going to be passed here as an input to our custom checkbox. And we are using here the bidirectional data binding banana in a box syntax to mean that this is an writable input. This completed signal here that we are passing to our custom checkbox component can be used to pass values from the parent component to the child component, custom checkbox, but it can also be used the other way around. It can be used for the child component, custom checkbox, to pass values back to the parent component. Let me show you how this works. Let's go back here to our application component and see here the definition of completed. This is a plain writable signal. And we are even creating here an effect so that we can log out here to the console whenever this completed signal emits a new value. Next, we are going here in our application component, apply here our custom checkbox component. We are going to pass our read-only input and our writable input. And let's also create here a toggle checkbox button that has here a click handler. Whenever this uh, button gets clicked, this function here on toggle is going to be triggered. And as we can see, this is going to toggle the value of the completed signal. As simple as that. So we have a way here in our parent component to trigger new values here for the completed signal that we are passing as an input to the child component custom checkbox. Now let's see the difference between the value model input and the label. If we check here the custom checkbox, we can see that 
both of these inputs are being used here in the component. But we also see here a click handler on the input box called onToggle. If we check here the implementation of onToggle, we can see that we are accessing the value model and we are calling update on it. So we can call uh, value.update. We also have available value.set. So we have the uh, value modification methods of a writable signal available in a model input. This is not the case here for the label input. So if I access here label, I can get the latest value by invoking it as a normal signal, but I cannot set it and I cannot update it. So label is definitely a read-only signal, unlike value that is a writable signal. So we can see that value is actually a writable input. It allows this component to pass information back to the parent component. Let me give you a quick demonstration of this application in action. And remember that here in our application component, we have this effect that is logging the values of the completed signal. So we are going to be able to see how custom checkbox is emitting values for this input signal. So if we switch here to a browser, we are going to have here a small demo application. The console is clear and notice what happens when I toggle here the checkbox. The effect is getting triggered as expected. And now when I click here on the checkbox itself, the signal of the parent component is also getting triggered as expected. So as we can see, model inputs are a powerful bidirectional communication mechanism between parent components and child components that are signal based. So this allows signal values to easily be propagated up and down the component tree with minimal boilerplate. And this is, I think, the main way that you are going to be using model inputs as writable inputs. Now, before covering a couple more important aspects of model inputs, if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. And if you could please leave me a like here on the video, I would very much appreciate that. Thank you so much in advance. Now let me cover two very important side notes when it comes to model inputs. The first is that you don't need to pass a signal here to your model input. So in this case, I have refactored the application component not to use signals anymore. Instead, completed is simply a plain Boolean flag. You can pass this plain Boolean flag here to your model input value, and this is still going to work exactly as expected. So here inside the custom checkbox, the value model input is still a writable signal. You can still use it in the exact same way. And when we apply here this syntax, we still get bidirectional data binding here to the completed Boolean member variable. Let me quickly demonstrate that. So here in our parent component, I have went ahead and I've added here the completed flag and I'm printing it out here to the screen. Let's now switch to a larger window and try this out. And as you can see, whenever I toggle here the checkbox, we can see that we have bidirectional data binding happening here. And whenever we toggle the signal from inside the custom checkbox component, we still have bidirectional data binding as expected. Notice that because I have removed the signal effect from the parent component, we no longer have here any logging. This is normal. Now the final side note about model inputs. This banana in a box syntax that you see here, it's actually a shorthand for this equivalent notation. So this is how in general Angular deconstructs the banana in a box syntax into two separate parts. So this is not specific to Angular model inputs. This is something that is true for the banana in a box syntax in general. It's a shorthand for this where we have the input property being passed in here with the usual template input syntax. And then we have here an output event with a change suffix. So this is a naming convention. It's the name of the property with the suffix change. And then Angular is going to automatically 
assign to the input property the value that is getting emitted. So this is what Angular is actually doing under the hood for us whenever we use the banana in a box syntax. So this one is equivalent to this one here. It's the same thing. This is what Angular is doing internally to implement the syntax. I think that this is very interesting to know because you can leverage this to actually use the banana in a box syntax and then get notified whenever the value changes using on value changed. Of course, if you want to get notified if this value changes, if you are using a signal, then you could do that with a computed signal or an effect. This might be interesting though if you are doing bidirectional data binding to a primitive value instead of a signal. You can combine these two together. If you want to learn about all the latest features of Angular, check out this video that I made on Angular 17.3. And if you want to learn advanced Angular concepts in a simple and uncomplicated way, check out my courses at the Angular University. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.